Shalom. If we say, somebody could check to see if we started by the Kasha. You know, somebody's on the comment board, if you can put a comment on there just to make sure. Are we good? Gone, gone. All right, Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakodash. We want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone at Ruwell. Peace and blessings and many salutations to you, elect Akiyam across the four winds of the kicking us word of sincerity and in truth. We want to say Shalom to the, the, the few that, or the, the, those that are out there that believe. All right, we know it's more so few than many, but you did have people that aided the elect, the men of the Lord, the prophets back in the ancient world, and best believe they're here today. And Shalom to the few sincere sisters that are out there that actually believe that aren't complete demons. All right, and Shalom to you, Akim, on the comment boards, man. All right, we're here another Friday, okay, getting the block heated up, you know, warmed up before the man camp hits it uh, later on this evening. All right, now today through the spirit, um, there was a few things that we were going to touch up on through the spirit. And you know how it goes. Things move around again. That's how the spirit works. All right, but the spirit was on me to pretty much go into the day of the Lord. All right, because hey, as Yahweh Shai commanded the disciples in Matthew the 10th chapter, he taught and told them and commanded them to preach that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. All right. So as we're out here to let you know the kingdom of heaven is at hand, we definitely need to let you know the things that are going to take place to your precious America before the kingdom of heaven comes to the planet Earth as it's spoken of. Because a lot of people get it misunderstood and they'll have you think the kingdom of heaven is where you die and you go up in, in, the, in the clouds forever. You know, and you're there with your little heart, with your angel wings. And everybody's there when that's not the case. And that's really a mythical fairy tale, man. All right, that really goes back to ancient Greek philosophies going back to Mount Olympus, man. All right. Hey, as the scripture's written, and even in Matthew the sixth chapter, it says, that kingdom on earth as it's done in heaven, man. All right. So the kingdom's going to be established on the planet earth. And the heavenly father had sent his messengers out here, which who we are, to tell you all this, man. All right, and let you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans know that you are the Israelites the Bible speaks of, man. All right. So let's go. Oh, you got some? Con, con. Jeremiah 28 and 8. The prophets that have been before me. Excellent and, scripture. Start and, off. Uh, and before thee of old, prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and the pestilence. Right. So that's that's what uh, this is Jeremiah talking to the prophet, man. He said the prophets that have been before him and before him of old prophesied against many countries, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, not, uh, America is not a, a country, man. Okay, it's a great kingdom right now. It's the greatest right. kingdom. Right. Okay, America is Babylon the Great right now in the scriptures. Okay, it's a com it's a culmination of all those wicked kingdoms mm -hmm. that came up against the Heavenly Father in right. one big ball of crap. Man. That's right. Okay, and so hey, they, uh, when the prophets prophesied, they prophesied of what? Evil, war, and pestilence, man. When the Most High got ready to take down a, a kingdom, okay, and raise up another kingdom, he always sent this man out for That's him, right. Man. Okay, that's right. To tell to tell of the things that are going to befall this place, good or bad, man. That's right. Okay, and so and that's what that and we're coming in that same state, man. Yeah. All right, we come out to prophesy what's going to happen to this place, man. Why? Because of the way it's carried itself in its rulership, you know. That's right. Hey, somebody's got to do it, man. We've been up in a society where it tells you don't judge, don't say this about me. Let me live my life, yolo. You only live once. Live in and indulge yourself in wickedness, man. We're here to tell you that's the wrong way. And according to the scriptures, man, the scriptures has a very harsh judgment that's coming to this place for the abominations that it uplifts and it beholds, man. And again, as the brother had brought up in Jeremiah, the 28th chapter, let me know that before every great kingdom had went down in great harsh judgment, the Lord had always sent his men out there to give them the news, man. All right. The prophets ain't never been just out there to tell you about peace. So let me rephrase that. There have been times when the prophets will let you know that, yeah, the Lord is going to bring peace on certain occasions. But right now, we ain't living in the time of peace right now, man. All right, so when it comes to peace coming to this place, that's not our message. Because, hey, man, the, the judgment that's coming to America, man, is going to be very violent. All right, the Lord has a pending doom that's going to hit the streets of America very soon. And he sent his prophets out here to let you all know. You got that, uh, you got that right now? Mark said this, man, yeah. We prophesied of, of, of that he came out here last prophet of the brother saying of, of the impending doom. Right. But also to preach about repentance, man, because of the doom that's coming. Man. Right. To wake up who? The so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, man, the true Israelites, according to the scriptures. That's right. Chiefly the elects. The only elect is gonna make it out of here. Mm -hmm. So we're out to prophesy that. 
<laughs> say the kingdom of heaven is at hand and pit of destruction is coming and repentance uh, needs to happen. Right? That's right. That's Amongst right. our people. Now that we're not out here for everyone. All right? right. We're going to clarify that. Okay, we're not out here trying to convert anyone. That's we're right. We're casting the net and the heavenly father brings them who he wants to bring. That's right, brother. Know? That's right. I God, brother. 1 Samuel chapter 16 and 4. And Samuel did that which Yahweh spake and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said. And what was Samuel's position, man? Samuel was not only a high priest, but Samuel was also a prophet as well, man. All right. And name, namely, he's known as being a prophet. Okay, Samuel was pretty much at that, he had the position of the ruler of Israel pretty much. Because this is before we had kings. All right, Samuel was uh, in the position of Moses pretty much. All right, he was the head of the council, the head of the priesthood. All right, and he was the head prophet pertaining to the school of the prophets. So when Samuel had went into the town of Bethlehem, it said the elders of that city trembled. Why did they tremble? Go ahead, I. It says, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, comest thou peaceably? And he said, peaceably. Yes, so there we go, man. When the elders trembled, the thing about it was, and let's re-go let's, let's re into this, man. All right, it said when Samuel had approached Bethlehem, when he went in there, because we ultimately know he went to Bethlehem to retrieve David. All right? So when he went into this, that was really his job. All right? But when he went into Bethlehem, the point was that the elders of the city had feared him because they didn't know the report that they was going to get, man. They didn't know the report that Samuel was going to give, I should say. All right, so they tremble, okay? And it's a mighty thing, and that's actually a respectable thing, all right, that those men had feared when the prophets came. Because we live in a land right now that there's no fear of the Lord, all right, the prophets that are out here. We've been preaching, we've been piping, we've been singing this song for oh so many, but you people don't walk and tremble in fear. That's why when the Lord brings swift judgment upon you, he's going to come as a thief in the night, man, because he's sending his messengers out here to declare these words unto you, but you don't want to hear all right and what did they ask sammy they said are you going to come of peace or no all right and right now like i stated before we're not living in a time of peace right now man this is a time of war and judgment you got those other nations over there in the valley of jehoshaphat the valley of yahweh shapat gathered together for world war three man and it's happening right under y'all nose all right you got hella you got hella warships over there in the mediterranean coast that's assembling that's assembling themselves together and nobody's talking about it all right but hey man that just goes into it but we're here within the stead of the lot of the prophets to tell you that death is coming man hey do you know america's gonna be destroyed by fire it looks like you're intrigued taking the pictures that's your job right but our job is to come out here and let you know that y'all are gonna die in a, a very horrific judgment pertaining to the bible do you, do, you, do, you, do you read the bible do you read the bible Somebody paid to your job. Oh, we, uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely we do it. Absolutely. We get paid by the Heavenly Father. We get a dispensation for our gospel. All right, now, do you believe in the Bible? You don't believe in the Bible? Okay, well, I'm going to like this if you don't. I'm going to just tell you, you're an Edomite, and you're going to go into slavery. I will. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, there you go. Esau said it. Now, we can go back to the point of Isaiah 61 and bring it out. Yeah, yeah. That, term, that term prophet is thrown out, man. Uh, loose, man. That term is called out pretty loosely around in America now, man. Mm -hmm. Where, like his brother stated, man, there's no fear. Okay? As, as we have the perfect example right here. That's right. There's no fear. Oh, yeah. Man. There's no fear. Tubby McDuff. Tubby McDuff. Tubby McDuff. You know? It's a lot. Scarfers, okay? Making mm -hmm. fun of the, of the work of the Heavenly Father. Yeah. There's no fear, man. There was a promise that was the Spirit, man. What the brother's talking about right now. That term prophet. That's our prophet is falling around real loosely right now, man. That's where people in the churches, all they do is try to sign a bunch of vain the nations, man. Right, that's right. You know, a bunch of BS, man. They're not really saying what's going to happen before. Right. That's what the word prophet means. That's right, brother. Okay, to say what's going to happen before it happens, man. That's right! Okay? And there is no fear right now, but that fear of the heavenly father is going to come. Man. It's going to come. You know? It's going to come. That's right. You got a preset, brother? Go ahead and pull it out. Chapter 3, verse 19. And break it down, huh? Behold. At that time, I will undo all that afflict me, which Esau has been made the whipping stick of uh, Israel ever since he's been set up mm -hmm. uh, uh, from, the, uh, from the Renaissance, man. And the Most High is going to undo all that afflict the Israelites. That's right. It started with you Edomites. It says, and I will and, and by the way, just so we can declare it, you Edomites are you so-called white people, man. All right, the Caucasian race. 
Now, granted, we do have Israelites that were scattered among the nations. So you're going to have Israelites that look like Edomites, that look like Moabites, and vice versa. All right, you're going to have Edomites that might come looking like different nations as well, man. All right, but the bulk of you so-called white people are the Edomites the Bible, scripts of, the Bible speaks of. And you're the nation of the Bible that has a pending permanent judgment and doom that's coming. All right, so lock your brother. I had to clarify that point real quick, man. Uh, it says, and I will save her that halted, and gather her that was driven out, and I will give them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. There we go. You see, and, and, and that praise and that fame is started right now, okay, with these, uh, and for an example, the reason why I brought the scripture out is the example with that, right. you know, I take and everything, you know, even though, you know, he's doing it for, uh, for the sake of, of putting us to shame, okay, but, but at the end of the day, Okay, that uh, spotlight being put on the men of the Lord is not going to change. It's only going to be back on the Lord uh, glorifies us, man. That's right. That's right. Con, con. Yeah, you guys had an Isaiah 61. Con, let's go. Because we're going to go into the kingdom of heaven, all right? And we're going to go into the things that are going to take place before the kingdom of heaven. Something has to happen first before the kingdom of heaven gets established on the planet Earth. And yeah, we had to raise up the volume a little bit because right when we started, they started playing the music, which is cool. I love it, you know? Isaiah 61 and 1. The spirit of the Lord power is upon you. And Isaiah had the role of a prophet, man. Just like all of us. And the, the world who the, the Lord who you ignorantly the Yahweh who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, reiterated this when he went into the temple, man. Alright, so this is pertaining to the gospel, what we're reading right now. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. That's right. And who was the meek, man? The meek is talking about the elect. All right, the meek is talking about the 144,000 in the one third. All right, you people ain't meek out here. You people ain't humble. All right, you walk around in great pride. That's what a heavenly father has to destroy this place. You walk around with great pride with your head in the sky, not thinking the Lord is going to come close to this place and judge you for the, for the wickedness that you've done on the planet Earth, man. There's only so long you're going to be able to live, live, and, and, and thrive in a polluted society, man. All right, the Lord is getting ready to come back very soon and judge you all for the deeds that y'all done. Go ahead, I. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And who was the captives, man? Goes into the scripture, brother, just brought it out out here, man. You know, hey, man, as you got those people that come up against us, talk mess about us, we represent the captives. All right, hey, as we were brought over here to the land of America, were we not captives? All right, are we still not considered three-fifths of a human being today according to the Constitution? That was never changed. All right, go ahead, I. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. The opening of the prison to them that are bound. All right, and namely, what were we bound under, man? We were bound under the law at a point in time. When you go into the curse of the law that Paul talks about, we were bound under that. Because if you want to go by the letter, there was no chance that we received salvation, man. All right, but, but through your house shy, through that anointing he had given us, that, that yoke has been broken. And now we have interest into righteousness, all right? We have interest into righteousness through grace. That's why it's written in Ephesians, the second chapter, by grace you are saved. Okay, go ahead. Huh? To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's what I wanted, to proclaim the acceptable year. And what are we out here doing? We're making a proclamation. Okay. Matter of fact, I uh, I not can you hold uh, Isaiah? Uh, I'm sorry, Psalm 68 and 11, Baba Kasha. All right, can you read that part again one more time, uh, Baba Kasha? Verse two, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord Go ahead. and the day of vengeance of our power. It says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. That's talking about the kingdom of heaven, and also it talks about what the day of vengeance, man. But right before that, Isaiah spoke about this being good tidings, bearing good news. So when you bring out the gospel of the Heavenly Father, when you bring out the gospel, I should say, of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, you're supposed to be balanced with it, man. And right now, right now, hey, you, you read it in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, where it talks about there's a time for peace. It talks about there's a time for war. It talks about there's a time for love. There's a time for hate. Right now, we're entering into the time of war, of wrath, of destruction. And when the Lord comes back, man, he ain't going to come back holding roses riding on my little pony as the church likes to give off that that idea or that thought man he's gonna come down the scriptures talk about a giant mountain and it talks about ten thousands of his own chariots coming down man all right hey i'm trying to, I'm trying to read it i'll oh, go ahead brother good you know you're an israelite man 
That's part of the mystery of the gospel, man. Isaiah spoke about the gospel. He said to proclaim the acceptable year and the day of vengeance, man. So we finna go with some scriptures pertaining to the day of vengeance, man. Right, right. Well, that mission that brother's talking about is that what? That was what crime thing that the Lord came for everybody. Right. Who the world calls Jesus died for everybody for the job three sixteen. Okay, but that's the mystery, man. That's right. You know, that world is the Greek word cosmos. That's right. That's representative of Israel. And she put the elect of Israel this time. That's right, brother. You know, so that's the part of the mystery, man, that the Lord didn't talk to everybody. Yep. The Lord is actually racist. He does only have one nation that he's dealing with, man. The Lord does hate. Now they say God is all love. You know, the scriptures say different, man. Okay? The most high is the complete battle, so he loves that hate. That's right. You know, if we're made in this image, if we have those same emotions, if we have those emotions, the most high is going to have those emotions. That's, That's right. Got That's you know? right. This is uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 49. I am come to send fire on the earth. And this is true to the world. Getting to call Jesus Christ, man. Actually, just thought about a, a verse a, a, a verse of two prior. Okay. What he says, suppose you that I have you say I'm gonna bring peace. Okay. Because remember, remember okay, so that's the next two verses. Oh, that's the next two? Okay, con, that's a bet. But you remember, man, you remember in Psalm and, and um, Samuel, we just read earlier, when the prophet Samuel had an approach back for him, what did those elders ask? Are you coming for peace or are you come not for peace, man? All right, because, hey, the prophets, again, they had particular lots where they would come out here and they would let you know that the kingdom was going to flourish or if it was going to go go down. All right, well, Yahweh Shah, he plays the role of the head prophet, all right, which he plays the role as the Messiah too, the king of kings, Lord of lords. But as he came in the flesh as Yahweh Shah, man, he came as a prophet too. Okay, so what did he say? Go ahead, brother. It says, Luke 12 and 49, I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I if it be already kindled? And what will I if it be already kindled? Yahweh already knew that there was going to be missiles that were going to be flying. If you put that in Psalm 11, about the song. Yahweh already knew that there was going to be missiles flying in the midst of right when he was coming back. All right? Hey, man, when these other nations send these missiles over here to America, hey, check it out, man. We have no clue. You know? But well, hey, man, the thing about it is, man, Yahweh knew that the missiles was going to fly. And the missiles that fly from the other nations that's going to come here to America, the angels are going to drive those missiles and intensify the heat to hit America, man. Yahweh knows all these things, bro. The Spirit of the Lord is going to be upon that fire. He said, suppose he, that, matter of fact, go ahead and read that again, Bubba Kassar. Read again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Luke 12 and 49. I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I if it be already kindled? Because it's already going to be a fire kindled, man. And even before all the fire comes, hey, man, America is going to be race riots, race wars. People ain't going to be able to eat. People ain't going to be able to drink. They're going to be eating their children. All right, the same thing that happened in Egypt is going to happen to America sevenfold, meaning plagues are going to hit this place. All right? So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of trauma on the planet Earth. It's going to be a lot of fire that's already killing over here in Mystery Babylon, which is America. Go ahead, huh? Verse 40, uh, verse 50. But I have a baptism to be baptized with. And what did John the, what did John the Baptist say about the coming of Yahweh shot? All right? What did John the Baptist say? Matter of fact, you got somebody can pull up that in Matthew 3, up the song. Gone. Because Yahweh shot said, I have a baptism to be baptized with. And again, Yahweh shot is the name of who, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. The letter J is only 400 years old. You got that in Matthew 3? Um, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water. This is John the Baptist uh, speaking this, by the way, that we're reading. Go ahead. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. And who is he talking about? John the Baptist is speaking, or he's heralding, or proclaiming the coming of Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right? Go ahead. I says, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. It says he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. All right. So not only is he going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit, because he's doing that with us right now, man. That Holy Spirit is like an unto a fire. Okay. Hey, it's even written in Hebrews, the first chapter, it says the angels are ministers of, and spirits of fire, man. I'm not saying the Holy Spirit is an actual angel, but the Lord deals with fire. All right, and he places his spirit inside of us to purge us and get us right for that coming day that's coming, man. That's what's going to make us worthy to be found standing in his presence when he comes back, when he reveals his face unto us, man. All right? 
but also to that fire that's going to come at the word to the world. That fire, hey man, that fire that's going to come is going to be a lot stronger than any fire that y'all perceive. A lot of people think of fire and they get it misunderstood with the devil, man. When that's not the case, all right, the Lord comes with fire, man. Go ahead. I Verse 11. I indeed baptize you with fire. Oh, wait. All right. Uh, Read it again. Yeah, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. You can jump back to 12. All right, so that's the point, man. Yahweh said, What? I have a baptism to be baptized with, man. So we understand after reading Matthew the third chapter that baptism of Yahweh is pertaining to fire. Because John the Baptist even spoke on that. Alright? So Yahweh is reaffirming what John the Baptist had spoke on him when before before Yahweh was baptized. Alright? Go ahead, huh? Uh, it says verse 50. Uh, verse 51. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. Because a lot of people get it misunderstood, man. When they think about who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, whose real name is Yahweh Shai, all right, they'll think he's going to come back riding on my little pony, all right, allowing everybody to come up and make it, man. When that's not the case, that's why I said, suppose ye that I bring peace on earth, man. Go ahead. I, I tell you, hey, but rather the vision. He said, no, man. He just got done talking about how he's going to bring fire on the earth. So how is he going to bring fire on the earth and bring peace on the earth at the same exact time? How? Peace is going to come afterwards. But in order for something to be built up with the kingdom of heaven, the previous kingdom has to be destroyed first. And when he destroys his kingdom, he's going to use fire to do it. All right? And you people are going to see very soon, man. It's only so long that y'all can go in on your father. And this is a mere example of the stuff that Noah had to deal with, man. All right, it went into the times of Noah. And we're living in the times of Noah right now. There's no fear of the Lord. The messengers of the Heavenly Father are being mocked. They're being mocked and scorned. All right, they play loud music over it. Soon as we started preaching the word, that's when they started playing that music. Hey, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if they were supposed to play this stuff two hours in advance. But just because we came out here, they're trying to get the crowd to come over there, which is cool. Because again, it goes into the mystery not being declared unto everybody, but only unto Holy Soul, which is wisdom. And you people are full of folly right now. And the Lord is going to visit you in that folly state. Go ahead, I. Matthew 24 and uh, 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Uh -huh. for, as in, for as in the days that were before the flood, there were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Just like what you see all over, the, just like you see all over Babylon, but I wanted to pan the camera just to point at the example right now, man, because it really goes to the party and it's bullshit, man. And even Biggie, Notorious B.I.G., made a song going into that, let's party and bullshit. That's the mindset that you peon ass Americans have. And that's a, that's a great example of it, man. All right, so Noah had to deal with it just like we do. Go ahead. Very and giving is very, and that goes into fornication. When you go into that word marriage in the Greek, that word goes into the word gameo, which means fornication. All right, and a lot of that was going on back then, just like you see today. Everybody walks around, sex is on their mind constantly. Our women are whores. All right, everything is circling around sex. All right, we live in a barrier, as we say, a, a gynocentric society, where Baal Pior is being lifted up just like in the wilderness, man. Just like in Zen. All these same deities and doctrines are being raised back up. Hey, it was happening in the time of Noah, man. Go ahead, I feel sorry. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came. And, it was, and how is the flood going to come in the form today? That flood is going to come in the form of thermonuclear destruction. Fire. Fire from the heavens, man. All right, in order to make, hey, the, 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 the Heavenly Father really put a spirit on these scientists to really compose the equations to come up with a nuclear missile, man. He really put on their minds to be able to split an atom in half and create a fire that's hotter than any hot fire in existence, man. Hey, that's information that only comes from the heavens. And the Lord had gave it to these scientists on the left-hand side to be able to do this just so his judgment could be brought on the planet Earth. 
All right. So, hey, just like there was a flood around the time of Noah for you Bible believers out there, the Lord is going to come with fire, brimstone, judgment, nukes, missiles. And it's coming very soon. Mock it, laugh at it, talk about it all you want. But when all your judgment happens, when you can't eat, when you got to eat your children, you're going to think of it as those men were right because it's written in the Bible. It ain't that we just talking out of our behinds, man. We ain't just talking out of, out of our behinds. No, man. We reading the words out of the scripture. And the brother brought up the precept early in Jeremiah, the 28th chapter. When the prophets came, they always came before the downfall of a kingdom to let you know that doom and judgment was coming to that place. And look at the things America has sown on the planet Earth. Look at what America sown on the planet Earth, man. It's sown so much perverseness, so much drama on the planet Earth, so much destruction. And the Heavenly Father ain't going to visit this place. You out your rabid ass mind. You out of your mind if you think America's going to flourish. You crazy for that. Look at what America's done to the earth. Look at what it's done. The Lord is going to come back and kill, man. Thus saith the Lord. Time we can finish this up and bring up precepts down. And knew not until the flood came. And took them all the way. And took them all the way. And how did he take them away? By surprise? He took them away by surprise. But what did the Lord do with Noah? He let Noah come into the ark. Because Noah... But it was only one Noah, and it was only his little household versus the whole earth. When the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone, what did he do? He took Lot. He took, uh, he almost took Lot's wife till she turned around. And he took Lot's two kids. And that was it. Everybody else was destroyed. And in this place, America is nothing but a, 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 an amplified version of Sodom and Gomorrah, man. So he's only going to take a few, just like he's always took a few. Uh, he's going to take the house of David. That's right. He took Noah's house, took his house, the house of David's going to take the house. That's right, brother. Beautiful point, brother. Beautiful point, huh? Uh, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man. There we go, man. So he's likening the days of Noah, the drama that's going to come, the destruction of the doom that came back then. He's likening that day to when Yahweh Shah Masiyah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. He's likening to that day. Is that it on that one? And that's the one we can that song 11 about the song. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 10. They said, I am Yahweh, my power. Truly thou hast greatly deceived these people. Yeah, hey, that's a beautiful precept. Because you people are greatly deceived, man. But hey, you read in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 11, and it says, the Heavenly Father had given them unto a strong delusion so that they, what they believe shall be alive. So these people walking around and, and some people will be like, oh, I know God is real. I know he's going to come back. But he put a deceived spirit on you and still live your life in the dogs in your flesh, man. And you don't think there's, there's nothing wrong with it. You think that he's going to have mercy on the things that you've done, the things that you've done to the apple of the Lord's eye, and everything's going to be all in forgiven. No, man, the Heavenly Father is slow to anger and firm on it. And the scriptures also say that he will allow you to stack your sins on top of each other. And then what did he say pertaining to Esau? Your sins have reached unto heaven. All right? So he had let your old sins stack all on top of each other, and they're going to pummel just like that Django over there, man. All right? They're going to pummel just like that, man. The Lord is going to destroy this building up kingdom that these people think is going to flourish forever, man. Right? And along with the tanks that uh, they don't want it to see the destroyed. That's right. You know, you're That's gonna right. end up like Lot's wife. That's right. I, it says, surely thou hast greatly deceived these people in Jerusalem. Hey, in Jerusalem, people for the place. So it's talking about you so-called Negroes, you so-called Latinos, and you so-called Native Americans, man. You are the Israelites. But what he said, he put a deceived mind, a deceived spirit upon y'all, man. That way, two thirds of y'all can be destroyed, man. As pertaining to Zechariah 13 and 8. Go ahead, huh? Uh, thou hast greatly deceived his people in Jerusalem, saying, Ye shall have peace, whereas the sword reacheth unto the soul. So, in your own mind, beautiful precept. In your own mind, you're going to think that it's going to be peace. But what does it say in 1 Thessalonians 4, 2 to 4 chapter? As soon as they say peace and safety, then utter destruction is going to happen right afterward, man. A lot of you people think, oh, all we got to have is peace on the earth. All we need is peace. Everybody needs to be at peace, guys. Yeah, love, peace. Man, the Lord is going to come with so much drama. 
Hey, and before that drama comes, the last thing in your mind is gonna be peace. You're gonna be thinking about how you're gonna deceive and kill your neighbor in order to get the bread that's in their bag. A lot of people I love to talk peace, but soon as drama hits, soon as adversity hits, that peace shit goes out the door. Uh, go ahead, I'm gonna drop down the first person. <laughs> kind, kind. Oh, he shall come up as clouds, and his chariot shall be as a whirlwind. It says he shall come as clouds, man. His chariot shall be as a whirlwind. What's that going to? Hey, man, those UFOs. Hey, y'all think? And that's a picture that, uh, uh, that, that moon. Hey, hey, there we go. Hey, the Lord's going to come back. A lot of people think that he's going to come back riding on horses, man. It's the reason why these, these UFO spotting are being sighted so much more, man. A lot of you people think it's big-headed creatures that lives in those orbs that float in the sky, man. No, those are the angels of the Heavenly Father. As the scriptures say, the eyes of the Lord are upon a sinful kingdom. Those represent the eyes of the Lord, man. So when he comes back, hey, man, when the Lord came back around the time of, uh, of we were in the wilderness, on Mount Sinai in Exodus the 20th chapter. Matter of fact, I'll be so please, please get that in Exodus 20 and um, I believe it's in Exodus 20. We start at verse 12. Did you have more than that now? Uh, I was gonna finish the verse, yeah. Yeah, finish the verse, I'll be so. Uh, uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 4 and 13, it says, in the middle it says, his horses are swifter than eagles. His horses are swifter than eagles, man. Have y'all, it ain't gonna be Pegasus flying around, man. This is synonymous for his vehicles, man. It says they're more swifter than eagles because eagle is the most swift cow that's in the skies, man. And if you've even seen his chariots fly by, man, right after that testimony that seen their chariots, man, the things zing across the sky and they can stop in thin air, man, and dematerialize and shoot up in the sky, man. The way the Lord's vehicles move in the sky is bizarre, man. But hey, man, only few have they been able to see it. Well, it's televised now with Iran looking at them at their chariots. Well, it's beautiful point. That's a beautiful point, man. Yeah, man. Hey, now y'all gonna really see the swiftness of the Lord very soon, man. Hey, like the brother brought the example up, man. Hey, you can look at it. There's a there's a video of a UFO and those Iran Iran military shooting at it, and it's just ducking and dodging all through the missiles, man. That's an example, a small example of his swiftness, man. Hey, when you read it, hey, it's like you. When you read it in Psalms 113, man, it says the Lord humble himself to behold the things in heaven and upon the earth, man. So that swiftness that you see of those chairs and how they move, that's a humble form of the Lord's Woo! power, man. That's, that's right. a small form of the Heavenly Father's power. And you people are going to bear witness to it, and it's going to have y'all shaking in y'all boots, man. Right. Last, last part of, uh, Psalm 104 and 3. Who led the beam of his chambers in the water? Who maketh the clouds his chariot? Who walketh upon the wings of the wind? Okay, so it's talking about the clouds and his chariot. Man, right. Boat. And the brother said how fast they were moving, how swift they are. Okay, when they were dodging uh, uh, the assault by Iran, he said they walk upon the wings of the wind, man. Woo! And they have to walk upon the wings of the wind, you know? And you're flying, and you're flying, man. I mean, that means, hey, that was a good example of that, man. That's right. And they were just playing with you, just child's playing with you. That's Iran. right. That's right. Compared to what they're doing when they pulled them in the best themselves in that day. That's how, like the brother said, he's not coming back on a horse or a package. After the first chapter, he was taken up to the chariot after being with the disciples. Right. And the angel said, What? Why are you worldly? He's going to come back the same way he left. Beautiful point, brother. Beautiful point. You got more on that enough? Just finishing that verse. It says, Woe unto us. Yeah. Uh, Woe unto us, for we are spoiled. We are spoiled, man. What does that mean? Destroyed. All right? And you people are going to be singing that song, Woe unto us. Woe is me. Y'all love giving y'all woe is me stories about y'all lives. You're gonna, it's going to be a real woe is me story, man. Even Ezra had to say it. Woe is me for in those days. You know, so even the men of the Lord, they asked us reading uh, 1 Peter 4. It says, the, uh, it says even the elect are going to scarcely be saved, man. So when the Lord comes back with his judgment and his clouds, as the brothers reading about right now, man, hey, it's going to be a lot of stuff happening, man. You know, it's going to be a very horrible day. Bump the song. Um, um, not Exodus 20, uh, matter it is first, pretty much when the Lord had came to Mount Sinai and Jacob was like, oh no, no, we don't want to see him no more. I thought I was, I thought I was like 19, 19, no 20 and 19. You got it? Okay, okay, it's a lot, it's a lot. Yeah, that's it, that's it right there. Exodus chapter 20. 
Uh, starting at verse 18. 18, Salakia. And all the people saw the thundering and the lightning. And this is when they wanted to see the Lord. This is when Israel wanted to see the Lord, man. All right? They talked to Moses and said, we don't want to talk to you directly. We want to talk to the Heavenly Father directly. So the Heavenly Father gave them instructions. He said, for three days, you ain't going to deal with your woman. All right? For three days, you're going to have to really scrub yourself down clean. And then I'm going to come and leave with you all. All right? And all the people saw the thundering and the lightning and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they were moved and stood afar off. Hey, so it says when Jake saw that the Lord was getting ready to visit this place with thundering and lightning and darkness, it says they was in fear, man. They was in fear. And that was only a similar to or an example, a small piece of the fraction of his power when he comes back. Because that happened over in Sinai. And it talks about the Lord's chariots are gonna be all over the earth and the whole earth is gonna bear witness to his power, man. The whole earth is gonna bear witness to his glory. All right? Go ahead. And they said unto both, speak thou with us and we will hear. But let not the most high speak with us die. Hey, they ain't want that smoke no more, man. And the thing about it is that was a beautiful thing. When you continue to read what we don't gotta get. But when the Heavenly Father had seen Israel react that way, when he came down, when he continued to read, he said that was a good thing. Because what does he require in order for you to serve him? He requires you to fear him, man. All right, it says the fear of the Lord is his treasure. Okay? So when the Heavenly Father had came back within those clouds and those chariots around that time, man, hey, man, that struck fear in him. But you don't see no fear upon these people, man. Again, like we were talking about earlier, they mock the messengers of the Heavenly Father. They do a bunch of perverse things. They uplift vanity. Homosexuals can get married. Lesbians can get married. You can go on and live and do whatever you want to do, man. The Lord is going to come back and kill, man. He's going to come back and he's going to flee with you all face to face. All right. You got that in Deuteronomy 5? Go ahead. I right. think that in Psalm 11. This is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 4. Deuteronomy 5, verse 4. Uh, the Lord talked with you face to face in the mountain. The Lord, and, that, that's, and that, that's pretty much it. That's the point that I want to read. I want to get that precept because we're going to go into how the Lord deals with face to face. Because when the Lord had came down, he didn't virtually talk to the Israelites face to face. But that was an example of how he revealed his power and his glory unto them, man. All right? And the fashion that he came down when he revealed his power and his glory was likened unto a fire. When the Lord came and visited the Israelites on Mount Sinai, the top of Mount Sinai was burnt to a crisp, man. And it's still discolored to this day over in Arabia. All right? So we're going to bring this out in Psalms 11. This is how the Heavenly Father is going to deal face to face. And we can start from the top. You people think y'all, hey, you people think y'all ready for the Lord? Hell no, man. That's why it's written in Amos 5, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. For the day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Right. All right, this is uh, Psalms chapter 11, verse 1. And the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mouth? For lo, the wicked bend their bows. King David is making a prayer, man. And he say, how should I say, how should I say flee unto a mountain? So pretty much what he's saying is I don't got to flee when, when perils come because the Lord is my state. All right, go ahead. Uh, they make ready their arrow upon the string that they may privily shoot at the upright and heart. That's right, and that's what they try to do, man. Okay, hey, man, when it's, who it's talking about, it's talking about Esau and Edom, the so-called white man. The Bible's, uh, the, Ed the Edomites, the so-called white man. All right, and how did he shoot at the perfect? Because it talks about in Psalm 63, how the counsel of the wicked tries to shoot at the perfect, man, with their lies, with their deceit, all right, with their warfare, whether it be whether it be um, chemical warfare, actually physical warfare, or, um, or just warfare through their media. All right, they've continually shot at the perfect, continually shot at the Israelites ever since we were brought low in captivity, man. All right, go ahead. Right. If, the found, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Yeah, go ahead. The Lord is in his holy temple. Yahweh by Shem Yahshua's throne is in heaven. And that's the thing, man. You people don't believe that, man. You people don't believe that the Heavenly Father actually exists. There's a temple that dwells in the heavens that you people don't even believe about, man. That's way more glorious than anything that we can even think of, man. All right, hey, man, when you see the sun, the moon, and the stars, that's only an inkling, only a piece of the glory of the Heavenly Father. Again, in Psalms 113, again, I'm going to say it. 
It says the Heavenly Father humbleth himself to behold the heavens and the earth, man. So when we look at the sun, the moon, and the stars, that's only a small example of the Lord's power. But where, where he dwells at, in his tabernacle, in his temple, oh man. That's above that. It's a, you said what? That's above that because all the planets, the moon, and the sun, that's, that's why right I can't reach it. That's, that's in the right. That's right. You know? You saw, you saw saying he don't, went to the moon when you can't even pass the Van Allen though. Right. You know? And the Operation Fishbowl show you that, how mm -hmm. high up this devil can shoot. He was trying to test the, the radiation, see if that was, if that, uh, if that, if that was penetrable or not. Right. But he can't, he can't go to the sun and, and the stars and all that stuff, man. That's right. That's only for the most high, man. That's right. Remember, a scientist trying to say they know where the throne of the Heavenly Father is. Oh, yeah? Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw that in the article like a week ago, man. All right, they say they know where heaven is, pretty much. Yeah. All right. But you can't go there. Exactly. You will burn to a crisp if you even try. Right. You know, with a Van Allen belt, really, you would yeah. freeze to death. Yeah. But I'm going to just put his, his glory yeah. is so powerful, it's so bright. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't be able to take it, man. You can't even go to the sun. No. But you talk about, you can't even go to the moon. Yeah. But you talking about, you you know where the heavens are? You get that, man. Yeah, yeah uh, so I go on the spirit world, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. You right. Get some crap. Full of shit, man. Right. Straight up. Right, but he's got that, that's his power though. His tongue walking throughout the earth, he's giving the power just to lie and say whatever the hell he wants, man. That's right. I, and a lot of people take hold to it, man. That's right, though. Know? That's right. According to Job 9 24, the earth is given to the hand of the wicked, man. Mm -hmm. That shows he runs the earth, but he can say some asinine, uh, ridiculous shit like that, man. That's and people right. actually believe it, man, to take hold to it. That's right, you know? I know. Uh, Psalms uh, 110, verse 1. Break it uh, down. God. But we can end it off. It says, uh, oh, damn. I'm sorry. I meant to get uh, uh, the uh, earth is my footstool. I saw a footstool. I thought that was it. It's all good. But I, I mean, I'll read it anyway. Psalms 110, verse 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I, until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Okay? And the Lord, Yahweh, said unto Yahweh Shai, sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies, which the enemies of, of the Heavenly Father, is these uh, uh, self-proclaimed, yep. Yeah. Self proclaimed white people, Edomites, okay, they're gonna be under the they're gonna be under the, uh, uh, the uh, authority of the Israelites, man. Starting That's with right. Yahweh Shai. That's right. And, and the scriptures say on that same thing, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. That's right. So in you know, in a roundabout way, it's saying that the earth is gonna be uh, uh, the Lord's footstool, man. That's right. You know, uh, yeah. But well, that was my first song. Okay. Come okay. on, come on. Yeah, let's finish this up with Psalms 11, and we can end it off on that. Right. Psalms 11 and. Um, Verse 4 again. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try the children of men. Yeah, man. And when you go into that word, his eyes behold, man, when you read it in the Hebrew, it goes now how he actually examines them that dwell upon the earth. All right. And that lines up with it says the eyes of the Lord are upon a sinful kingdom, man. And what are his eyes like to? His eyes are like to his angels and his messengers, his prophets, man. All right. So everything that we see. All the wickedness that we bear witness to, all the things that we cry unto the Heavenly Father about, the Heavenly Father receives it. What we're doing is we're giving a report, all right? And the angels give a report as well. When those chariots fly by and zoom by, not only are they distributing to us the gospel, but they're also reporting the deeds that are being done down here, and they're sending it back up into the Heavenly Father, man. All right? Go ahead. God. The Lord tried the unrighteous. But the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul will hate How does he try the righteous? As we had read in Matthew, the third chapter, where it says, He whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear shall baptize you with fire in the Holy Spirit. He's trying the righteous with the fire right now, the things that we go through, the tribulation that we catch. All right, that's why it's written in Malachi, the third chapter. It says, He shall be as a refiner's fire and a fuller's soap to purge the sons of Levi, to try them as silver and gold is tried, man. That's how he's doing that right now, man. But what is it? Go to the wicked? Uh, um, but the wicked and him that loveth violence is so hated. And that's just, namely, it's talking about you so-called white people, man. You Edomites. All right? And you're, in the Bible, you are called Edomites. You ain't called Caucasian. All right? Your nation of people are Edomites, Idumean. You are the sons of the wicked. Right. All right? That's meant to have a pending harsh judgment of slavery and fire coming. Right. All right? to say for Jacob have I loved Esau have I hated that's right okay so the most I has a complete hatred for you Edomites man. that's right okay
okay? He hates the other nations. Well, you got dealing with him, but he has a specific hatred for the house of Esau, man. That's, that's why right. Esau has the judgment. That's why Esau has the judgment that's prescribed, man. That's right. Because now the most I feel about you. you that's know? right. I... You, you were just a wicked creator for the damn evil pursuant to uh, Proverbs 16 and 4. That's right, brother. You no? Know? That's right. Uh, verse 6, upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and then horrible tempest. Baba Kishore Anak, can you pull up that word snares there in Psalms 11? Because when you read this, you find it very interesting, man. King David is prophesying about the nuclear missiles right here, man. Now, we understand that, but he's literally talking about nuclear warheads right here. All right, when you go into this word snare, let's see what it says. That's in the King David is talking about the thermonuclear ICBM missiles that are going to come and destroy Mystery Babylon, which is America. All right. The word snares is ha, which says a bird trap, uh -huh. a trap, a snare, calamities, Go ahead. plots, source of agent, or excuse me, source or agent of calamity. Go ahead. Um, it says a plate of metal. A plate of metal, man. All right. So read that part again about the snares, Bob the Shaw, and keep that out because we're going to go into words right here. Okay. Psalms 11 and 6, upon the wicked shall he rain snares. Upon the wicked shall he rain plates of metal, man. And within these plates of metal, what are they going to do? Go ahead. Uh, fire and brimstone. So within these plates of metal, he's going to bring fire and brimstone. All right? That's how the Lord is going to plead with Mystery Babylon. We read it earlier in Matthew and Luke, the 12th chapter. Yahweh Shai says, I have a baptism to be baptized with. And he said it's going to be with fire. Go ahead. Uh. Uh, and in horrible tempest. Go into that word horrible, Baba the saw right there, I not. Okay, okay. All right. It says a horrible tempest, man. But when it says horrible, I mean, you understand, it's fire and brimstone, it's going to be horrible. But it doesn't mean horrible that people are going to only be like, oh my gosh, what's going on? No, man. You people ain't going to have a chance to even say what's going on in that day when you read this definition. Go ahead, brother. The word, the word horrible is Zalaipa, which means burning heat or raging heat burning heat or raging heat all right and when you when you read the book of psalms in the hebrew when you actually have the, the book in hebrew and when you go into that it says he's going to bring forth a fiery blast when you go into that word horrible it says a fiery blast and when you go into that word blast in the definition of the word blast it only means something that's hot enough to burn metal man the apostle Peter said in second in second Peter the third chapter the day of the Lord shall come with a fire where the elements shall melt with fervent heat so that's that horror that the Lord is gonna bring the Lord is gonna bring horror on this place he ain't gonna come and bring good to this place man the Lord is gonna and it's coming soon that's right you people think that the Lord is gonna continue to pin to pin his coming judgment that's coming man how long do you think America is gonna go on in this wickedness man how long do you think you're going to be able to party and bullshit here in America? The time is done. The seals of the ark are being closed. The marriage is here. The kingdom of heaven is coming to the earth. And before it comes, fire and death and destruction has to happen first, man. And you people are going to experience it firsthand. Go ahead, I. Uh, I got some questions. Malachi 4 and 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stumbled. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, that Yahweh shall have host, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Okay, so hey man, that's a, that's, a, that's that day the brother's talking about, man. It's gonna burn as up. That's right. Okay, that's that new destruction spoken of. All that are proud, because we can we can see that many displays of, of pride just just before us right now, right. man. That's right. You know? That's right. And then we see it daily on social media, at work, and in public, you know, different settings, man. This place is lifted up with pride, man. That's right. And, 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 and full of wickedness, man. And That's they're right. proud of their wickedness. That's right. And people are going to be stuck on that day, man. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's right, brother. Back in our Psalms 11 and 6. So we're going into the destruction that's coming, the fashion, how the Lord is going to send his nukes off. But you find it interesting with the next verse, what he says. Uh, this shall be the portion of their cup. This shall be the portion of their cup. So let me read that, but I want the last scripture, Job 20 and the last verse. Matter of fact, nah, it's cool. We can end it off on there. I, Lord, when I do a lesson later on. Okay. Because okay. got, you got to get the words to it. <laughs> uh, for the, verse 7. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. His countenance doth behold the upright. I know. Bible can pull up that word countenance. Pull up 
because right after it went into the Lord's judgment, the fire that is going to come, it says the upright shall, uh, he shall be, his, matter of fact, read that again while he's bobbing the shawl, brother. Psalms 11, 7, for the righteous Lord loveth righteousness, uh -huh. his countenance doth behold the upright. His countenance doth behold the upright. All right. So you find it interesting that right after David, when in all the calamity and destruction, right afterward, it says in the last verse, his countenance shall behold the upright. Go ahead and read that word countenance, Bible saw in the Hebrew. It says, Panyam, uh, which means face, faces, presence. Uh, there's a lot of definitions. Well, the, the main point right there, when you go into countenance, it goes into his face, man. Yeah, yeah. So when the Lord reveals himself unto this people, it's going to be fire, judgment, death, destruction. That's why it's written in Malachi, the third chapter. Who shall be able to stand when that day comes? All right. But like we had read in Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter, it says, Behold, I have pleaded with you all face to face. And when the Lord, when, when that was written in Deuteronomy 5, he was alluding back to Exodus, the 20th chapter. When the Lord had revealed his face unto the nation of Israel, it was doom and judgment. And it was to the point Jake ain't want to see it. But it ain't going to be no turning back this time, man. The Lord is going to come. He's going to come and he's going to bring fire, man. Hey, when he brings his face unto the planet Earth, it's going to be fire, man. When the world bears witness the face of the Lord, it's going to be fire. But the upright are going to be able to behold it in that day, man. Like I say this, that's why I was saying, thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Woo! You know? When he calls and brings that judgment that's been prescribed to, to, uh, to fruition, man, uh, fruition and it brings it forth, okay, the people are going to know who the, real, right. who the real power in the heavens and the earth is. Man. That's right, I. You know? So, the source of what is talking about that face, man, you're going to know. You're going to know. my face, you know it. Woo! Y'all going to know the power of the heavenly father that day, man. The that's God right. of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's right. Not the whole world, man. That's right. The world of Israel. You you gonna know in that day, man. That's right. All right, and you, you gonna have no cloak for your malicious, no cloak for your sins, no excuse, because he sent his men out here to tell you, man. That's right. That's right, man. The word has been distributed. The word is being published. You are gonna have to die within your wickedness, man. All right, and we are gonna end it off on that. Hey, Lord, when this was edifying to you, brothers, on the comment board, man. Hey, and the Lord's gonna bring death and judgment over here to Victory Babylon, man. A Bob before. All right. We gonna end it off on that. We wanna give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings and many salutations to you, elect. Kicking this word, proclaiming this gospel, sincerity and in truth. Salawam. Salawam.